What is going on guys? Welcome to a, another Swift video. In today's video, we're going to learn how to build a simple to-do list app for beginners. So here's the app we're going to be building. We've got a bunch of entries already. I'm going to go ahead and enter in a new item here. So we are going to say uh, watch video with a nice exclamation mark. Let's make sure we spell that correctly. We're going to hit done and you can see here it added it to the bottom. And the coolest thing is this actually saves everything appropriately. So if we close the app and reopen it, we still have this persisted here. So it's a full functional to-do list app that we're going to make from scratch. So if you're into iOS, if you're excited about making this, make sure you start by hitting that subscribe button, liking the video, getting Xcode ready, get pumped. Let's go ahead and build out this to-do list app. Quick pause before the video. This video is brought to you by iosacademy.io. Head on over to check out the newly launched TikTok and Swift UI courses. Learn to build world-class professional apps in a fraction of the time, quickly and efficiently. That said, let's get back to the video. All right, we're gonna get started by opening up Xcode and creating a brand new project here. We're gonna stick with the app template under the iOS tab, and I'm gonna go ahead and call this our to-do list. Make sure your language is Swift and your lifecycle is UI kit. Go ahead and continue, save it wherever you'd like. We'll save it to our desktop. And I'm gonna expand our Xcode window here, close the right panel, hit the run button at the top left in a simulator of our choice. We've got the 12 Pro Max selected. And we're also gonna jump into our view controller where we will start writing out our to-do list. Uh, there is our simulator getting uh, started right there. Let me move this guy over to the right-hand side and let's start building out our to-do list. So what do we need in here? So first we're gonna set a title in our controller here and it's literally gonna be called to-do list. Pretty creative, I know. And uh, here we've got our uh, app loading up. I think it's loaded already, but our simulator's in uh, being a little slow. So just give it a few seconds, there it is. But we set a title here called to-do list. And the next thing that we wanna do is create a table view. Now this table view is a component that you're gonna to use to list out all of your to-do list entries, uh, which by default, we're not gonna have any, but we still need a table. So I'm gonna create a private constant, so a let, we're gonna call it a table, and I'm gonna create it with the anonymous closure pattern here. And here we're gonna say this table is a UI table view. We're gonna return table, and in between here, we need to actually go ahead and register a table view cell. Uh, and this is every single row that you see uh, with an entry. And we're gonna register it with a string called cell, just like that. We wanna go ahead and add this on the UI by saying view add subview table. We're also gonna want to set the table views data source property equal to self. Now what this is telling the table is we self will be providing you the data Self in this case is the view controller. You'll see that you have an error here and the reason for that is because we need to conform to the UI table view data source and the data source has two required functions. So you can hit this error that's gonna pop up and hit fix and it'll bring in those two required functions for you. I'm gonna cut them and just paste them down here. The first thing it's gonna ask for is number of rows in a section. We're just gonna say zero for now. And this function here basically creates and returns a cell. So we're gonna say cell is uh, table view, DQ a reusable cell with an identifier, which should match the identifier we registered up here, which is simply cell for index path. We're gonna return cell. And let's go ahead and hit command B. Should be compiling. Now we need to also give the table a frame. So we're gonna override view did layout sub views. We're gonna implement super view did layout sub views. And we're gonna say the table's frame, which is its x, y width and height is equivalent to views bounds. So in the entirety of the view. So go ahead and hit command R to build and run. Let's see what we've got. We should not see any title, but we might see the row dividers for our table since we don't have any data in the table. 
the first thing we need to do is where we need to get our uh, to-do list title showing up at the top left here. To do that, we're going to jump into the main.storyboard and I'm going to tap on uh, the heading up here above the view controller. In the toolbar, we're going to go to editor, embed in, and I'm going to select navigation controller just like that. Now we're going to select this navigation bar on the left panel here, open up the right side, and we're going to check this box that says prefers large title. And if you go ahead and give it a run now, you'll see that you have a nav bar at the top of your app and it also will show the appropriate title, which we have called to-do list. So looking pretty great. So now we just need a way to actually let the user enter in uh, a way, uh, rather a way for the user to enter in a new entry. So what we wanna do is we wanna add a little plus button up here and that plus button should uh, do one of two things. We could use another screen to enter in content, uh, or what we could do is we could just show an alert. So we might go with an alert. So the way we add that plus button is by saying navigation item. We want to assign its right bar button item, and I'm going to say UI bar button item, and we're going to assign it with a system item here. So we can go with a, this one down here, let's see, bar button system item. The type we want is going to be add, so we get that nice plus button. Target will be self. And let me go ahead and close this right panel so we get the code aligning a little better. The target will be self and the action is gonna be basically what function do we call when we tap the plus button. And I'm gonna call it did tap add, just like that. We need to now create this function. So I'm gonna create it right down here and you need to prefix it uh, objective C, the at OBJC, since it is a selector. And in here, we wanna basically create an alert which has a field that we can type in. So an alert is gonna be a UI alert controller with a title of new item, a message of enter new to do list item, just like that and a style of alert. We're gonna want to present this alert with an animation. Now this alert, we also want it to have two buttons, one for you know canceling. So we're gonna add an action and it's gonna be a UI alert action with a title of cancel, a style of cancel and a nil handler. And we wanna add in one more action for actually adding the uh, item into our to-do list. And we're gonna say this is once again, a UI alert action with a title of, uh, let's say done, a style of defaults and a handler. And basically in this handler, we wanna get the input of the text field. So we first need to add a text field to our alert, but before we do that, let's go ahead and hit command R to build and run. Let's make sure we've got our plus button up here and that it is showing our alert. So cool, we've got a plus button, we can tap it and see our alert here, but no text field just yet. So let's go ahead and do that. We are going to say alert and we want to add a text field just like that. And it has a configuration handler where we can actually configure this field. So I am going to say the field uh, has a placeholder of uh, enter item dot dot dot. And that's probably all we need to configure. And once the user hits this done button, we are going to get the field, which is going to be uh, alert dot uh, text fields dot first, just like that. And if we're able to get the field, we want to get the text out of it. So we're going to say if let text is field dot text. And we want to make sure the text is not empty. And this is where we would enter new to do list item. But for now, let's just go ahead and uh, print out that text. So let's go ahead and hit command R to build and run. And let's go ahead and hit the plus button. And we get this cool thing here. We can see we have the field, which is auto focused. If you don't see the keyboard on the simulator here, like I do, or I don't rather, you can hit IO in the top left in the toolbar. Uh, keyboard and you can toggle the software keyboard like that to get this guy popping up. So we're going to type in uh, get milk 
we're going to hit done and we'll see in our console down here that we have printed out get milk. So we can print it out, but we, what we actually want to do is we want to add it to our to-do list entries and then refresh our table. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is we are going to create a global uh, var, which is going to be items, which is going to be a uh, array of strings. In our table views functions for number of rows, we're going to say instead of zero rows, we want to show the number of uh, items that we have. And in our cell creation function, we're going to say the cells text label text is going to be the item at the nth position, whatever position row that we want. So if it's the first row, give me the first item, second, third, so on and so forth. But now we just want to actually add in two items. So we could just say self.items, we could say append in our text, and we can say self.table view or table reload data. And we want to do two things here. Uh, the first thing we want to do is we want to make sure this occurs on the main thread because we are updating the UI and closures uh, always execute in uh, a asynchronous background fashion. And we also want to say up here, uh, weak self, so we don't cause a memory leak. And both of these selfs now need to be self question mark, so self optional. Go ahead and hit Command R to build and run, and we'll see that the items uh, do in fact appear. But we're going to have one more issue to take care of. So we're going to type in get milk. We'll hit done, and boom, there is get milk. But if you close the app and then open it again, you'll notice a problem. Uh, and the problem is our entry just disappeared and it actually looks like I opened up the wrong app. Let's try this one. We'll notice our entry has disappeared. So where is our entry? Well, it no longer exists because we didn't actually save it. We just updated it in line and to-do lists to really save the entries. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is introduce something called user defaults where you can go ahead and actually, uh, you know, save some data to the user's device. So what we're going to go ahead and do here is we are going to say the new entry uh, needs to be in an array. So we'll say new entry will be in an array. So the square brackets, and I'm going to put text in here, and we're going to say user defaults uh, standard, and we want to set a value for the given key. So let's see, we're going to say set value and the value we're going to go ahead and set is our new entry here for the key of items. And every time the app opens, we want to go ahead and query these to go ahead and set it to our items array up here. So at the top of view to loads, I'm going to say self.items equals user defaults standard and we want to get a string array for items, and if it happens to be nil, we're gonna say it's an uh, empty array just like that. And uh, if you go ahead and run it now, you'll see that we can actually save the items to the device. We'll still have one more issue to take care of, so we're gonna come here and just say get milk. I'm gonna add it, and then I'm gonna go ahead and close this out and reopen it, and we should still see get milk, which in fact we do. But if we go and add one more thing, you'll start to see an issue appear. We'll say do YouTube upload. Go ahead and save that, close the app and reopen it. And we now don't have get milk anymore. So what the heck just happened? So what's going on is here, we're actually replacing the entry every time. And instead of replacing the prior entries, we actually first wanna get the prior entries and then add another entry to it. So I want to copy this thing we added to the top of view to load and I'm going to place it down here and we're going to say uh, var current items uh, equals this whole thing. So get the string array for items and then we are going to append uh, basically to current items the new entry which is text and then we are going to update the items with uh, current items now that we have appended in the new text that the user has entered. So go ahead and hit command R and that should do it for your basic fully functional to-do list app. So here we have our to-do list app. We have one entry that I spelt wrong too late now. We're going to add in a new entry and I am going to say go running 
And let's go ahead and add a few more. We're also gonna go ahead and say, uh, let's see, edit video. We are gonna also say, make to do list. And of course, we're gonna close out the app now because we went about our day. And whenever we come back to it, we'll see that we have all of our entries still showing up. So that's it. You guys built a whole to-do list app. It's about 70 lines of code. Let's do a quick refresher. So the first thing we've got up here is a table view, which is the UI component to show a list of uh, these rows here, which each one hold a entry. We also conform to the UI table view data source, which is the way that we supply these two functions, uh, which supply the data to our table. Number of rows is gonna be the number of items uh, array, the number of items in it. Self row creates a cell with the ID of cell, which is a string we use to register. And it sets the text at that cell to the nth item. In view did load, we go ahead and uh, set items to be basically whatever is in our saved items array. If we're not able to get the saved items array, we say assign it to an empty array. We set a nice title at the top. We go ahead and add it as a sub view and assign its data source. We add a nice plus button at the top right hand side so we can go and add new entries. When that plus button is tapped, we create an alert, add a text field to that alert, add a cancel button, and add a done button. Once the done button is tapped, we go ahead and unwrap the text field because that is optional as well as the text. And on the main thread, we go ahead and add this new entry to the current item entries for our to-do list. We reassign our, rather we append to items and we reload our table view. And then finally here, we've got a present call for the alert. In view to layout sub views, we're saying the frame of the table is the entirety of the view, which is how we get it to be uh, like this. And the one other thing that we did is in our main that storyboard, we selected our controller, went to the toolbar, hit editor, and then we embedded it in a navigation controller. And then I also changed the navigation bar style to be large uh, by checking this box here, which is prefers large titles, which gives you this nice look like this. And that's it. That's how you create a super simple table view, um, table view with a to-do list in your uh, app in Swift. If you enjoyed the video, definitely drop a like down below. Subscribe for daily Swift uploads. If you're into making apps, if you're learning iOS, we've got a bunch of videos here and a pretty big community uh, of app developers. Uh, so definitely hit subscribe. Comment if you're confused, if anything was you know not clear. I love getting feedback and helping you guys out as much as I can. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.